today we're talking about family. We're talking about um, being women in the fire service and just the process of starting and building a family. If each of you could just go around and give me your name, your department, and how long you've been a firefighter. And we'll start off with you. And thanks for having me, Lasana. I'm Jen Elmiger. I work for the city of West Sacramento, and I've been a firefighter for 20 years. I am Heather Buren and San Francisco Fire Department for 27 years. My name is Katie Hart. I work for Alameda County Fire Department, and I've been there 15 years. My name is Nadia Haveno, and I work for Alameda County Fire Department, and I've been there for seven years. Okay. All right. Well, I thought we could start with, um, you know, talking about your introduction to the fire service. Nadia, can we start off with you? My journey is very interesting. I grew up around the fire service at Station 34 at Emeryville. Uh, with, at the time, it was Emeryville before they merged with Alameda County Fire Department. My dad uh, is a retired fire captain with Alameda County. Um, I just always enjoyed that uh, atmosphere. My dad coming home, being really excited about work, going and coming from work. Um, he worked a lot. Um, so a lot of the extended family members at the fire service or the fire department were my uncles. My mom is very uh, educated. So she pushed me, you know, to make sure that I had my education first before I decided to pursue anything because no one could ever take that away from you. Um, so uh, being an athlete throughout my childhood, um, I did consider the fire service in the beginning, but again, as I stated, my mom wanted me to pursue education. Believe it or not, my dad wasn't really too fond of me being a, a woman going into the fire service, you know, just being a protective father. So I pursued my college career at the University of New Orleans um, on a D1 scholarship. And then uh, the economy hit in 2007. And uh, my family told me, don't come home. You know, the economy's really bad. I'm like, oh gosh, what am I going to do? Then I decided to pursue higher education, got my master's degree through the uh, corporate world that I was working with. And then from there, after con completing my uh, higher education, my master's degree, there was something more inside of me that I wasn't, um, I wasn't displaying it in, in the corporate world. I said, I just felt like I needed to do more. So I just didn't feel fulfilled. And I told my dad, I was like, yeah, I went to college and everything, but I just feel that there's something more in me that I need to do. Mm -hmm. So I came to visit him and um, mind you, I was also, uh, going through from Hurricane Katrina and all that stuff. So those were also impacts um, in my life as well. So when I came home, I met a firefighter. Uh, out her, she works for our department. And, um, you know, just seeing her move and how she worked around the, the men and women in the fire service. And then mind you, before I didn't see m women in the fire service growing up. The light bulb went off when I saw more women as I came to visit the station and my dad's like, yeah, she's not the only one here. And I was like, really? And then after speaking with her, she, you know, motivated me. She's like, you know, it's never too late. Go ahead and pursue it. So after I went back and flew back to New Orleans, I decided to start pursuing the fire service. And then um, here I am. What was the turning point for your dad to support his daughter going to the fire service? He gave me a little bit of tough love, but once he saw that I was serious, he gave me the tools and bits, bits like in little small bites. And when he saw that I was really adamant and that I had the drive to really pursue this, and he was like, you know what, you, you really made for this and he supports it. And he's happy that I am, you know, carrying on the legacy. Was he still in when you, when you started working? Yes, he, wow. he was still in. Well, he retired uh, probably a few months pr uh, prior to I got, a, before I got online. Okay. But he did, uh, they did allow him to come with me on one of my days, concluding my 90-day nice. online. And he, did he pin you? He did pin me. Yeah. My mom and my dad were there on stage, um, but I had him pin me. Nice. It's, Isn't that a beautiful memory? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is. Wow, yeah. Katie, how about you? <clears throat> kind of mirroring Nadia a little bit. My dad was Oakland Fire. He put 30 years into Oakland Fire Service, but... You know, my entire time growing up, I always wanted to be a firefighter, and he was incredibly supportive of it. He always thought I'd be a great firefighter. His crew was always welcoming. He worked with female firefighters. Oakland had women in the fire service since the 80s. And so I grew up in that kind of environment. Um, his big 
I guess push for me was get a college degree. You're, if you blow out your back, if you blow out your knee, if something happens, like you need to have a backup plan. So mm -hmm. I did my firefighter one and my junior college at the same time. And then I went away because I got a scholarship to play water polo elsewhere. Um, I actually originally was hired by LA City Fire. Um, oh, wow. But when I got hired up down there, I found out my dad had a terminal um, lung disease. And so I moved back home to help take care of him with my mom. He really wanted me to take the job in LA. He's like, I'll move my treatments down there, move the family down there. I was like, no. like. We're going to come back up here. You've supported us your entire life. I'm supporting you. And the cool thing was is that um, Alameda County, Aisha Knowles brought me into that family. And she really mentored me and helped me get hired on with the reserve program, get me hired on with the department. And my dad was able to be there when he pinned my badge on me. And that was like the motivation all I needed to, for every brutal day at the academy was like, he will be there. And so he held on for a couple of years, saw me promote through the ranks of engineer. Unfortunately, he passed away right before our wedding. But he just, you know, my dad was my number one um, mm -hmm. supporter. But it was kind of interesting to see the dynamic between him and my mom because they've been married forever. And my mom was always the rock. You know, she always, he was always, you know, he was Oakland Fire, like very much so. And if anyone knows what I'm talking about, like those are just a certain <laughs> breed. Mm -hmm. But my mom was just always like that rock that always kind of kept us in line and not made us do anything too crazy. And so them as a team really pushed me and have supported me and have helped me become the firefighter and mom and all those things. So I'm really fortunate to have the, that support system coming into this career, because I think that's what you really need. Yeah. Thank you for, for sharing that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and shout out to Aisha. Oh, <laughs> she's a girl. Indeed, we love Aisha. And how about you? I never saw a woman firefighter growing up. Went to school at UC Davis. It was the pressure I put on myself. You have to get a college degree because you don't quite know what you want to do yet. Um, I did know that I wanted to help people, even though that's a bit cliche to say. Didn't know quite in what way. Um, so I went to UC Davis to study psychology and human development. Sophomore year-ish, there was an advertisement in the hallways at, on campus for a, um, for the Mendocino National Forest for a, a hand crew, a type two hand crew. And I was like, huh. I can do that. You know, I was, I grew up playing sports. I played soccer. Um, I was playing rugby at the time, um, a club sport at UC Davis. Um, so, you know, it's like, I, I can hike. I can, I can do that. Why not? So tried it out. Oh, and it, it paid 10 bucks an hour. So I was like, oh my gosh, mom's going to make some money this summer, hopefully. Um, but truly, uh, my first um, fire, it was a campaign fire. Um, it was, it took us all around Nevada and Utah. We got helicopter rides to a certain part of the mountain, then we had to hike the rest of the way. You know, arduous, exciting, the, the teamwork, that camaraderie, it was just so rad. I was like, oh, oh, this is what I'm gonna do. This is great. Um, for, a, for a little bit of time, I thought, you know, definitely wildland firefighting, that's what I wanna do. Um, I realized though, uh, even though it was a great, it was a great way to start, um, I wouldn't be able to have a healthy family life if I was gone all summer. So I, you know, it was slowly but surely. I, I worked a couple seasons, um, graduated college in June of 02, got hired full time with the Forest Service. So uh, as a assistant um, fire engine operator, so it's engineer sometimes, firefighter the other time. Uh, and it was, it was great. It was, Great experience, but um, put myself through Butte Fire Academy. I did have a wonderful mentor who was a rugby teammate who had gone on to Butte Fire Academy and then she got hired at Salinas Fire and she was like, Jet, you could totally do this. This is the way, sis. I'm like, okay. So um, <laughs> so went, to, went through Butte, it was great. Um, and then just started applying. So that was my, yeah, my journey to get hired. Yeah, it was kind of like a never saw a woman do it and then could do the wildland stuff, and then it, I, Butte was kind of the tester for me. You know, the 24 foot extension ladder generally isn't something that young women have access to unless they're, they've got family members in the fire service, which I never did. Um, so, yeah, I was like, oh, and I excelled there, and I felt very unstoppable <laughs> at the time. So, just applications in and got hired uh, with UC Davis Fire in 2004. Um, and mm -hmm. Uh, worked there for about six years and then got hired in West Sacramento in 2011. So, yeah, it's been mm -hmm. an amazing adventure thus far. <laughs> Beautiful. 
I had done what a lot of, um, you know, everyone here was talking about, was told to get an education first, which was very important. I grew up back east and transplanted myself out here. Um, so I had already gotten an education. I went to school in Virginia. Um, I was an athlete as well. And I wanted to just get out of New England. I wanted to go west. You know, people say, why do you want to go to California? It's going to fall into the ocean. Well, I wanted to come find my fortune, you know, seek your fortune. <laughs> so I did. I didn't know anybody. I packed my car up. I was 20. I landed in San Francisco and um, started working with youth. So I had a degree in sociology and criminal justice, and I wanted to change the criminal justice system for our youth because I thought it was bad. And so I started doing that. And along the way, um, got a postcard in the mail. So it was also mentioned here that Oakland had women early in the eight, in the 70s or 80s. 80, 85, I think they first came in. Oh, okay, so you weren't, we were, were a little bit behind you then. San Francisco, um, first women came in in 88, actually. And so the, I was, um, there was a postcard just came in my mailbox. Do you want to be a firefighter? Um, and it had a picture of a woman firefighter on it. And so I was like, huh, never really thought about that. I was working in Oakland at the time with a conservation corps. Uh, with youth at risk, and um, I thought, well, I'm, I'm strong, and well, no, I'll give it a shot. Went and saw a group of women, um, firefighters, San Francisco women firefighters, talking about it. They had like an informational session that we've probably all gone and sat on panels now to talk to young women. And there was five or six women, and they were just strong and beautiful and well-spoken and, and like joking and laughing with each other. And I was sitting there, I was 20, five and I was like oh I think I like to do that so I went and took a test it was just this this big civil service test with 8,000 other people <laughs> it was crazy it fit with me I didn't know it would fit until I started doing it and it absolutely fit I grew up in a big family I can fire it off with the best of them I know how to fight my way out <laughs> yeah. of things and you know <laughs> when you have to when you're yeah. in a family like that and you're not the oldest and the biggest um, and so I think it, it really fit and um, I loved the city and um, so yeah, I think it went from there. <laughs>